Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, welcome back to this NPTEL course. Today, we will learn about the erosive wear mechanism. Erosive wear is mainly caused by the impact of solid particles or liquid against the surface of an object. So, if you have certain solid particles impinging on a surface, right, so you will have the material is removed from this surface or the underneath the surface that material removal is called erosion or the erosive wear. So, the erosive wear can happen in many number of ways. For example, erosion can happen by liquid impingement, the liquid can strike the surface and then lead to material removal or a mixture of the particles and the fluid, then you have a slurry erosion or a cavitation erosion certain mechanism where the cavities are formed by. So, you will have a erosion cavitation erosion or a solid particle erosion where the several particles will be impinging on the surface that leads to material removal. Listing down the examples of erosive wear, we will can find the erosive wear dominating in grit blasting nozzles or coal turbines or coal hydrogenation equipment where the coal particles will be impinging and then leading to the equipment's material removal or the hydraulic turbines, hydraulic turbines where you will have a stream of uh, liquid as well as the mixture of the liquid or the particles will, uh, will impinge on the materials, the turbine material that leads to material removal or pipelines used for coal transportation same uh, coal particles in a hot air. So, uh, hot gas with the coal particles are cutting tools where you will find lot of particles being removed from the uh, edge of these cutting in the contact with the work piece. These particles will be impinging on the uh, surface of this cutting tool material and the material is removed by the erosion or the erosion of the soil itself we can find a uh, damage to gas turbine blades when an aircraft flies through uh, dust clouds or wear of pump impellers in mainly in the mineral slurry processing system. So, there are several examples like this where is a erosive wear is dominant. Erosion in some cases is useful for example, sand blasting you want erosion to happen by this sand blasting right, but in a controlled way or abrasive deburring or erosive drilling of the hard materials, you need a controlled erosive wear. So, erosive wear shall be understood thoroughly. So, first erosion by a liquid. So, erosion by a liquid is as dangerous as the solid by the solid particles provided the impact velocities are sufficiently high. For example, aeroplanes flying through clouds or a turbine blades in wet steam conditions where you can find this erosive wear by the liquid. If you have certain uh, water droplet coming onto the surface, surface right and then at a high velocity. So, there happen certain shock waves at the contact and these are relieved by forming a crack and then material is removed. So, this is one example where the water um, coming on to the surface that lead to fracture of the surface. So, wear is a result of a series of such transient contact stress pulses in the impacted material. So, with respect to velocities at lower velocities, one material is firstly roughened uniformly and then that, uh, uh, that subsequent formation of the craters. These craters uh, craters will lead to the material removal. 
at high velocities holes or pits are formed on the one material by impin impacting droplets right so if at all the material is a brittle material which is impacted then you will have the fracture dominant so at low velocities and high velocities the material is removed in a uh, uh, re removed in the form of a crater and then forming a lips or by forming a holes and pits with respect to the velocities of the liquid. So, or in a particle plus the fluid mixture uh, generally we call this as a like you can say the slurry erosion right slurry that form that is formed by a mixture of a particle and the fluid. So, if you have the this fluid having low viscosity or high viscosity then you if you have a difference in the viscosity of the medium in which these particles are flowing right particles are flowing and then impinging on the surface. So, depending on the viscosity there will be uh, uh, there will be a difference in the overall material removal. If the particle trajectories are unaffected by the media when you will have the low viscosity this is where the, med the, the, the medium is of high viscosity then what happens you see here the flow of the particle here the flow of the particle is actually deviated flow of the particle is actually changed. So, the flow of these particles in this medium is changed because of the viscosity of the medium. So, the drag forces imposed by this viscous slurry on the erosive particles can affect in uh, uh, altering the impinging angles, impingement angles. So, you will have a difference in the material removal. So, in a slurry erosion generally the fluid viscosity uh, the, or the medium viscosity plays a major role right or you can also see the turbulence of the turbulence uh, uh, of this flow is also making a uh, difference in the in the erosive wear. So, if you have the laminar flow the particles will be moving in a streamlines right without uh, impinging on the surface. So, the material is uh, still uh, not material not removed. Uh, uh, substantially are not fractured substantially. So, but if you have the turbulent flow turbulent flow of this medium. So, the particles are more likely to come and then impinge on the surface. So, that will lead to more plowing or cracking that leads to more uh, wear right compared to the laminar flow if you have the turbulent flow of this medium the particles are more uh, impinging on the surface right and that leads to accelerated erosive wear. So, cavitation erosion, cavitation is defined generally as the repeated nucleation growth and then violent collapse of these uh, bubbles or cavities in a liquid right that leads to material removal. So, where these bubbles are impinging are collapsing on the surface that material is removed. So, we call this cavitation erosion, cavitation is defined as the repeated nucleation growth and violent collapse of cavities or bubbles in a fluid in a liquid that leads to the material removal. Cavitation erosion generally arises when a solid and a fluid on are in relative movement and bubbles are formed in the fluid that become very unstable and implode against the surface of the solid. So, you have to maintain the stable bubbles then you have a lesser cavitation erosion. If you have a unstable bubbles that will lead to more impingement more possible impingement on the solid surface or the more collapse on the solid surface that leads to material removal from the solid. So, the cavitation wear is much milder process than erosive wear right. So, the examples of cavitation you can find damage found in components such as ships, propellers or centrifugal pumps you will find all these cavities cavitation erosion right or bubbles collapsing on these pumps surfaces or the ship propeller surface that leads to erosion that is cavitation erosion. So, the reduction of the surface tension uh, of the liquid reduces damage as does in the increase in the vapor pressure. So, cavitation erosion has an incubation period like that we found in erosive wear 
uh, but the weight gain found in erosive wear is is not possible unless the cavitated material absorbs liquid. So, weight uh, weight uh, measurement is not a prominent technique to assess the cavitation erosion. So, the materials which protect against the cavitation usually have a uniform microstructure without having any difference in the mechanical properties between the phases. So, you will have minimum cavitation erosion right. Then comes solid particle erosion, solid particle erosive wear is the dominant erosive wear found in several engineering applications. In, in coming classes, we will also see several case studies on the solid particle erosion of several uh, ceramics and ceramic composites. So, we shall study the solid particle erosion thoroughly. Solid particle erosion occurs when discrete solid particles strikes the surface, surface with a high velocity right. So, they come and then impinge on the surface. So, they will have an interaction here when they impinge on the surface. So, the energy has to be transformed, transferred on to the surface of this material. So, this material is not able to absorb such energy then what it will do? It will actually fracture right. So, when the energy is not absorbed by this material then that leads to material removal. If the so that, but you can see here also there are particles which are causing the material removal like that we found in the abrasion abrasion also we have certain particles causing the, uh, the material removal, but it differs from the three body abrasion uh, primarily in the origin of forces between the particles on the wearing surface. So, basically in erosion contact stresses arises mainly from the kinetic energy of the particles because they are coming with a high velocity and they have certain mass. So, this kinetic energy of particles flowing in air or a liquid stream as it encounter encounters the surface. So, you will have a material removal right, material removal this material removal is a erosive wear. So, basically the kinetic energy of the particles makes this uh, wear right contributes to the wear. So, if you look at the forces acting on the eroding particle, so in a fluid flow there is a drag force and the, par the particle itself has a gravitational force due to weight or the drag flows in the fluid contact stresses exerted by the surface or interparticle by the surface or the interparticle contacting surfaces in a stream of particles you will have several particles. So, interparticle surfaces also. So, there are several forces acting at the contact where this particle impinging onto the surface whereas, in abrasion the abrasion involves movement of hard particles, you will have two surfaces in which you will have hard particles along the surface under contact pressure conditions right. In abrasion material loss depends mainly on the normal load and the distance they travel as well as the size and shape of these particles. Whereas, in erosion it is the number of these particles and their impact velocity at the striking contact that that actually determines the extent of the erosion wear erosion wear. So, uh, the numbers of such particles the velocity of that particles having such a mass. So, that kinetic energy the numbers of the particles and the mass of the particles and their impact velocities. So, mass and impact velocity that leads to kinetic energy number and the kinetic energy of the particles striking on the surface leads to the uh, wear. If you look at the overall wear mechanisms in a solid particle erosive conditions, the wear can occur by simply abrasion or fatigue or plastic deformation or fracture or by melting or by secondary effects of super plastic flow or such things or even the atomic erosion. So, generally abrasion is found in erosive conditions when the erodent particle comes and strikes at a lower angle. So, you will have this material removed right as a chips or the fatigue at higher angles and lower speeds you will have this surface or subsurface cracks propagating 
that leads to material removal. So, fatigue actually contributes to the erosive wear or the solid particles impinging at very high angles like 90 degrees, but with a medium speed then you will have the plastic deformation of the surface and leads to the plaque uh, to the flake formation or thin sheet like material removal right or if the material is not plastically deformable that means it is brittle material like then in ceramics whenever these particles strikes at a higher angles with a medium speed what happens this there is a lot of fracture at the nearer to the contacting contacts. So, that will lead, lead to the brittle failure by the propagation of such cracks or at high angles and high speeds there will be a possibility even for the melting in addition to this cracking or there may be certain secondary effects like super plastic flow or melting or the uh, deformation of the debris so on so forth. So, these are also possible or there can be at atomistic level also atom can be er eroded from the crystalline arrangement by this, but these are more uh, these are less likely to happen, but most of the engineering components they uh, wear in erosive conditions when solid particle uh, uh, impacts on the surface by, by mechanisms of abrasion, fatigue or deformation, fracture, melting and some certain super plastic flow. Let us understand this solid particle erosion of a ductile material right. So, the work you can you can consider a, a particle of mass d m impinging at a velocity v the velocity v and the traverses traverses certain distance and by traveling actually it erodes the material or by the depth of d right. So, actually the work done by retarding force is, act, is actually equal to the initial kinetic energy of the particles right. So, you can actually determine the work done by, under, by taking the velocity and the mass for the given uh, uh, eroded materials uh, hardness right hardness. So, from time t 0 to time t there is certain material removed the total wear volume because of this erosion for certain exposure time t can be understood v equal to this steady state erosion uh, uh, this uh, erosion erosion rate erosion parameter this ma m is the total mass of these particles impinged velocity of the such particles v h is the hardness of this uh, eroded uh, material. So, steady state erosion ratio is the ratio of mass of material removed by the mass of erosive particles. So, the mass of re material removed to the mass of erosion particles erosive particles. So, the steady state erosive uh, ratio is equal to the k e k e is the uh, erosive wear parameter that actually accounts uh, for the uh, uh, shape and size of these particles right and rho is the density of this material, uh, v is this velocity of this particle, h is the hardness of this material. So, so E r is equal to k E rho v square by 2 h. So, this is the erosive wear parameter right. Now, just you can uh, remember that we will have an adhesive wear conditions or abrasive wear conditions also the wear rate can be related to the hardness in a similar way right. So, higher is the hardness of the material being eroded lesser is the erosion right. So, it is almost similar to the abrasive wear or adhesive wear uh, equation, but only difference is you will have the term involved with the kinetic energy or the velocity which is involved whereas, in abrasive and erosion you do not have such a kinetic energy related parameter right. So, so if you look at these uh, ductile materials mainly they are damaged in erosive conditions by cutting or by ploughing right. So, during cutting by uh, angular particles mainly a crater is formed and in a repeated conditions the crater leads to the lip formation the material is removed. So, you will have like the lip removal 
right or if you have this cutting cutting this cutting or by simply deformation which we call ploughing right. So, the during cutting erosion by angular particles crater is formed the rounded particles deform the surface by ploughing or surface fragmentation by several impacts of indentation type. So, if you have this particle after cutting go in a forward direction generally material is removed as a chip uh, um, whereas, whereas if you have certain material uh, particle uh, in a in cutting conditions and then but the roll back then they lead to again the lip formation. But with respect to the angle of this impingement at a low grazing angle cutting erosion is dominated dominated. So, you will have at lower angles maximum erosion occurring for a ductile material for example, aluminum and then after that it reduces with increase in the impact angle almost uh, one third or half of this peak of the angle you will find at a high uh, at this condition right. So, erosion is reduced after this peak uh, angle or the angle at which the peak in the erosion is observed. But at normal incidence deformation mechanism is dominating. So, here it is the cutting and here it is the de deformation. So, the deformation mechanism dominates in a ductile materials that leads to less erosive wear whereas, cutting is dominated then leads lead to higher erosion wear. So, at lower angles cutting is more dominant at normal incidence or higher angles the deformation mechanism is dominant. So, if you look at the erosive wear of several metals pure metals generally show good relation with the hardness and resistance to wear by both abrasion, abrasion and erosion. Of course, there are certain exceptions of tungsten or molybdenum like, but you can see the resistance it is inverse of the volumetric erosion versus the vickers hardness. You can see the pure metals always show with increase in the hardness you will have a increase in the erosion resistance, but hardness dependence work, work hardened material work hardened material is not linear and alloys including steels show a weaker dependence of erosion resistance and hardness. That means, this gives a very important observation that it is not only the hardness that leads to the erosion right or if you want to select a material with a higher erosion resistance you have to not only see the hardness, but all you have to see even the elastic modulus of that material. If you remember our discussion in the abrasive wear, abrasive wear again the degree to which the plastic flow is localized around each particle impact site, which will influence the susceptibility of the displaced material to the removal. So, this degree to which the plastic flow is, is more important or in other words the ratio of elastic modulus to hardness is more important than simply hardness. So, simply hardness, but if you see erosion of a brittle material, brittle material they tend to fracture easily by the propagation of a crack right. So, uh, this erosion of the brittle materials occurs by the propagation and inter intersection of the cracks produced by impacting particles onto the surface right you will have several particles they and then they actually create lot of cracks at the impacting surf con contact. So, static as well as dynamic indentations with blunt indenter for example, spherical indenter if you consider this particle having a blunt indenter right a spherical indenter uh, uh, at sufficient high loads that produce a surface ring cracks right ring cracks in in other classes we will also see there are we will also understand there are mainly two types of cracking developed in brittle materials one is the ring cracks or the conical cracks second is the uh, lateral fracture or radial median lateral fracture. So, radial median lateral, lateral fracture generally uh, uh, are developed by the sharp indenters whereas, the surface ring cracks or conical cracks are developed by the blunt indenter. So, we will have less concentration of loads. So, actually that will lead to a conical cracking. So, you will have a certain so conical cracking. So, whereas, in a sharp crack that means a particle with a sharp edges that will lead to 
a cracking and this cracking is generally radial median or the sharp cracking. For, for sharp particles erosion by elastic plastic indentation fracture theory of brittle materials is applicable. So, the high contact stresses are relieved by the plastic flow just around the tip of this indenter. Indenter I mean the sharp particle, particle with a sharp edge. When the contact stresses, contact stresses reach a critical value, tensile stresses across this vertical mid plane, mid plane initiate this radial median cracks. So, when high contact stresses are relieved by the plastic flow around the tip of this indenter. Indenter I mean the particle with a with a sharp edge right with a sharp edge. When the contact stresses reach a critical value tensile stresses across the vertical mid plane initiate a initiate this median vent crack which extends further with the load. So, while uh, rolling of this erodent particle or while going away from the contacts for, of this erodent particle what happens that is unloading happens. So, during this unloading the medial crack median crack is closed and the relaxation of the deformed material around the contact region produces residual stresses that is residual stresses result in a lateral crack lateral crack. When this lateral crack propagate further and then they, they reach the free surface this material is removed and this material is nothing but the wear particle or wear debris, wear debris right. So, erosion of brittle materials can be estimated, estimated by knowing the size of the particle, velocity of the particle coming and this is the density of the erosive particle and then hardness and fracture toughness of the eroded material. You can see the fracture toughness exponent is much more than the hardness exponent. So, we can also say the erosion is more dominant by the fracture toughness than the hardness for a brittle material right. This rho is the density of the material being eroded right. So, the erosion rate can be A is a constant the erosion rate can be estimated by this uh, 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 formula. There are certain formula there are certain similar formulae actually developed based on the experimental results, but what we can note down here is the erosion rate is dependent on the particle size, particle velocity, the particle density, the hardness of the material being eroded and the fracture toughness of the material being eroded. So, if you look at the major factors affecting such erosion rate you will see the with increasing the exposure time erosion actually increases increases and after that it may lead to steady state or it may decrease or in another case there will be a initially negative erosion wear to uh, to accommodate all the plastic strains inside the material and then it reaches a steady state. With respect to uh, with respect to this particle size you can see the erosion rate erosion rate. So, as the particle size is increasing erosion rate also increasing right also increasing, but the erosion the rate of increase is different from one material to another material. The hard material have higher rate of erosion with increase in the particle size than the softer material. So, you can see the even harder ceramic materials have a very sharp increase after certain particle size. With respect to impact angle as we discussed, so for a softer materials the peak is in the shallow angles right for a hard relatively hard materials it goes to the 90 degrees angles are a normal incidence. Similarly, for a brittle material like ceramics this is for the ceramics brittle material you will have always erosion rate higher at the same time erosion rate leading to maximum maximum at the normal incidence. But for a rubber like of rubber materials this is rubber or plastic materials this you can see the as the impact angle is increasing erosion rate is decreasing. So, these are the metallic materials which are soft material right 
are the hard material this is hard metallic material for a hard ceramic material it is much more erosion rate and increases to maximum at a 90 degrees angle. So, with respect to impact velocities again as the increase uh, as the impact velocity is increasing erosion rate increases for both brittle and ductile materials, but with a different uh, uh, rate of increase right. So, there are all these factors affect the erosion rate. If you look at the ceramics and cermet materials these materials are useful mainly in the high temperature erosion conditions why at elevated temperatures metals becomes excessively soft whereas, ceramic become more ductile which suppress the brittle mode of erosive wear. So, you can have an advantage if you use the ceramic or cermet material in high temperature erosive conditions. So, uh, we will also see certain case studies where this point will be uh, highlighted. Uh, disadvantage by uh, in using the ceramics or cermet materials of course, with the brittleness which may result in a accelerated wear. So, cermet materials for example, a ceramic material of tungsten carbide with a cobalt binder this cobalt being a metallic it increases the toughness. So, there happens a balance between the uh, toughness and the hardness. So, the brittleness actually is reduced by an optimum content of this cobalt. So, that this wear can be reduced to a acceptable levels in erosive wear conditions when you eat the cermet material. So, this tungsten carbide cobalt being a very popular hard material used as a cutting tools where you can find less erosive wear. In general oxide ceramics have higher erosive wear re resistance compared to carbides or nitrides. For example, aluminum oxide, zirconium oxide or zirconia toughened alumina oxide uh, you know, ceramic materials have higher erosive wear resistance compared to silicon nitrides or silicon carbides. Coming to the next category of material polymers, polymers particularly cavitation erosion polymers show good wear resistance mainly because of the low elastic modulus or you can say the polymers generally show a good erosive wear resistance. The in a when particles are impinged on a polymeric material there can be a rippling and lateral displacement at low impingement angles or the impact induce a induced chemical degradation for example, adsorbed H 2 O and then Tra and that lead to material removal. Uh, so, impact induced chemical degradation and formation of a weakened surface that leads to cracking and then surface layer this surface layer is weakened by the thermally accelerated degradation in presence of oxygen or uh, water right. So, erosion of polymers generally is lesser than the ceramics or metals. So, finally, how to protect the materials against erosive wear? So, there are two ways to protect one way is you can actually have a material which can be having extremely high hardness, but at the same time tough. So, that the impacting particle is unable to make any impression on the surface after erosion. So, a material particle actually impinges on the super hard material which is even a, a, which is also tough. So, that this itself is destructed particle is itself is damaged. So, after erosion you do not find any damage on the surface of this material this material or you can also have a material which can be tough at the same time extremely low in elastic modulus. So, that all the kinetic energy of the particles is harmlessly dissipated. So, you see the particle is impinged on this material the strain within the elastic limit of the plastic with the flexible material. So, the energy is absorbed. So, because of this energy absorption you do not find any permanent damage on the material surface. So, the erosive wear can be protected by choosing a material which is extremely hard and tough or a material which can be tough with an extremely low elastic modulus. So, in both conditions you can have a protection against the erosive wear. So, finally, you have several testing methods to assess the erosive wear by jet impinging method right a gas and the particles total mixture is impinged this mixture of this particle and gas is impinged on the surface and the material is damaged right. So, at a particular velocity and the angle of impingement at a particular temperature conditions and the humidity conditions you can have this material uh, removal assessment 
similarly, similarly a whirling arm jig. So, you will have this material rotated and then you will have this particle impinging on the component or reciprocating loop you have a mat the material is placed here and then this particles are rotated in a fluid or a centrifugal resist centrifugal accelerated particles are are dropped at the same time the there is a mechanism to uh, for the centrifugal uh, force and then with the centrifugal force material is damaged. So, you'll, you can assess the erosive wear. So, last one. So, there is a synergetic effect of a corrosion in erosion in certain conditions right. So, in high temperature conditions oxidation or aqueous corrosion conditions corrosion dominates. So, uh, there is always erosion oxidation or erosion cor corrosion in certain engineering applications. For example, wear of boiler tubes and combustor components in particle uh, laden flue gases or of turbine blades in gas turbine engines, wear of the impellers, castings of pumps, handling corrosive slurries. So, in all these conditions, you have a synergetic effect of corrosion in erosion. So, erosion corrosion material loss rate is mainly enhanced by the mechanical removal of a surface protective film which leads to higher corrosion giving a significant synergetic effect. You have a mechanical removal of this protective film. So, there is a corrosion which forms a passive layer because of the mechanical uh, removal of this passive layer the corrosion even increases right corrosion rate increases. So, material is removed by both erosion and corrosion or in other way a synergetic effect acts on the material removal in erosion condition which also to be controlled in uh, uh, for the use of several engineering components. So, finally, summarizing this erosive wear. So, we understood what is erosive wear uh, particles impinging are if a fluid impinging on the material so that the material is removed that material removal is called erosive wear you will have a slurry erosion cavitation erosion or the solid particle erosion. So, so slurry erosion again the slurry is a mixture of particles and the fluid. So, you will have erosion erosion by the slurry or you will have a liquid by simply a liquid impingement a cavitation erosion bubbles forming they are collapsing on the surface. So, you will have a material damage or a solid particle erosion you will have a solid particles impinging at a certain velocity. So, the kinetic energy is transformed onto the material. So, if the material is not able to absorb such an energy so that dissipates the material by a fracture. So, you will have a material removal as erosion. So, mechanisms of erosive wear by plastic deformation or erosive wear by brittle fracture right brittle fracture. So, you under these categories again you will have a cutting and the ploughing. So, you will have again in these mechanisms uh, there are inherent internal mechanisms like abrasion fatigue uh, or the melting or secondary effects uh, followed by this deformation or the brittle fracture. So, listing down all these mechanisms you will have this abrasion fatigue plaster deformation right abrasion fatigue plaster deformation or brittle fracture or you can have melting right or even super plastic flow or even you will have a crystalline arrangement in which atoms are atomic erosion right. So, whereas, these erosions are more uh, uh, dominant for a overall material removal. There are uh, erosive wear can be understood for the deformable material erosive care can be understood by the uh, uh, for the brittle material. In both cases the erosive wear rate increases with increase in particle size or the velocity of the particles or the impact angle impact angle for the deformable material or a ductile material you will have a maximum erosive wear occurring at the lower angles. Whereas, a brittle material uh, you are a harder material you will have a maximum erosion occurring at the higher angles or a normal incidence right. So, these factors affect the erosive wear. Uh, so, we have also seen several examples of engineering materials metals 
ceramics and polymeric materials. So, in all these conditions uh, we find for ductile materials it is the E by H more important parameter than simply H right or for a brittle material uh, you have more domination of the fracture toughness uh, than the hardness. So, brittleness has to be has to be controlled by such certain uh, material processing techniques so that the erosive wear can be controlled right. So, mainly the protection against the erosive wear can be by uh, by application of by uh, ero the protection against the erosive wear can be uh, obtained by materials having super high hardness and at the same time tough or the materials tough at the same time low elastic modulus. Uh, materials having super hard high hardness and uh, at the same time tough or the materials which have a high toughness and at the same time low in their elastic modulus. If you use these materials then the erosive wear can be restricted. So, in coming classes we will see several examples of this erosive wear uh, 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 where we found systematically the uh, how this erosive wear can be understood by material parameters as well as the operating parameters. So, finally, closing this wave mechanisms uh, part of this lecture. So, under a given combination of operating parameters there may be number of competing wear mechanisms adhesive, abrasive, fatigue, fretting, oxidative wear, tribochemical wear or a erosive wear based on the operating parameters. So, you will have a number of competing such wear mechanisms that leads to actual material removal. So, one has to find out out of them what is the dominant wear mechanism right. So, it is also important to investigate the role of various material parameters for example, hardness, elastic modulus, fracture toughness and the severity of individual wear mechanisms right. Such an approach of investigation into various wear mechanisms is very much important to the development and design new wear resistant materials. So, so uh, let me stop this uh, wear mechanisms part in coming classes we will see several case studies where all these mechanisms can be identified. Thank you.